Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. My name is Master Paul, and I am honored to connect with you today, the last day of the month of February, 28th. It is a Tuesday. And today's subject on this live stream is the nature of the spiritual journey. So if you happen to stumble across this, highly recommend you stick around. Might be one or two slices of wisdom that can benefit you. You never know. Sometimes all it takes is that one jewel that can assist us to move forward in our spiritual journey. I have achieved uh, a level in the Institute of Soul Healing Enlightenment where they give you the title of Master. And I went through various levels of certification and basically it's just a label. It means that I have uh, achieved a level that I can teach this wisdom with some degree of understanding. Certainly not enough to where I can take you all the way to full enlightenment. That's what my teacher does. His name is Dr. and Master Yigong Sha. And Master Sha is an extraordinary being. It's one of the reasons why I share his wisdom because he has taken me from kindergarten to, uh, to the doctorate level in regards to the spiritual realm because of uh, who he is and his background and uh, his teachers. <clears throat> and so we're blessed to have such an amazing being with us here today uh, who can speak enough English that we can get some great wisdom. So as a student and master teacher of Dr. Master Shah, uh, I dedicate my practice to offering blessings that can significantly uh, bring value to people's lives. Uh, I have been offering these blessings for well over seven years now, and I have seen people's conditions become aligned back to places where they uh, used to be. And um, this is the value of following a, a individual who is dedicated to serve humanity. Because when somebody dedicates their life to serve humanity, they are in essence elevating their soul standing. They are elevating their realignment to the divine, the source. Um, to the Tao, to whatever name you wish to offer it. But, and as <clears throat> any one of us in our spiritual journey align to this higher uh, part of ourselves, to this original source that we come from, then we also align to higher power, higher frequency, and higher abilities. So as a master teacher, I have received extraordinary abilities, the ability to read the Akashic Records, the ability to hear from the soul world very clearly and share that what I hear with others, and the ability to offer extraordinary blessings that truly can bring tremendous resolve to people's life problems in a much shorter period of time. And I give all the credit to my teacher, Master Shaw. For without him, I would not be sitting with you here today. I would not have uh, been on this path that I am on, and I would certainly would not be able to assist as many souls as I've been able to, for which I'm very grateful. <clears throat> um, I'll give you a brief synopsis as we go into this spiritual journey of mine. I know that's not really too much you care about that. I want to give you just a little bit so that when I share with you about the spiritual journey, you'll understand that I do have somewhat of a background and I can speak from a place of experience and a place of gratitude. I can speak from a place that hopefully can assist you. So this, this hour is not about me. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I want you to know that there needs to be a little background before you can, off, before you can receive the value of what I'm going to be sharing. So I'm going to pause and recognize everyone that's joined us here on live stream today. <clears throat> so um, welcome to Diane Wooten. Welcome Elaine. Aloha Brianna. Welcome Tammy. Welcome Melissa Rose and Lynn. Haven't seen you in a while, Lynn. Good to see you here. Welcome Kristen Rojas. Hi Zilke. Hi Sherry. And uh, also welcome CJ. Welcome Dawn. Welcome Elizabeth. Hi Lily. Hi Chelsea. Aloha, Eleanor. Welcome, Pat. Welcome, Raul. Welcome, Stephanie. So there are probably some who are watching now that uh, I haven't mentioned your names. Also, some people, uh, they have difficulty connecting on the live stream when I go live. And typically that has to do with their carrier, the uh, quality of their stream. 
<coughs> could be the, um, the software that they're working with on either their computer or their telephone. So if you're one of those, I apologize. But good news is it is recorded. You can always watch it. So if you have not already, please hit the share button. Let other people know about this. This subject matter will probably resonate with quite a few people. Uh, there are 8 billion, excuse me, well, not quite 8 billion, 7.2 or 7.3 billion human beings on this planet. Who knows how many additional souls are here, but that's quite a few unique personalities. That's quite a few people on their spiritual journey. So certainly this wisdom will help some of them and it may help you, but it's unlikely it's going to help everybody. Um, let us go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul, as we gather some more souls <coughs> for today's sharing. I'm going to place my hand in the soul light era hand position. Everything that I do is related to the soul journey. Every action, every spoken word, every body posture, it assists us with aligning our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies to our creator. And so there's a purpose for everything that I do. There's a purpose for everything that my teacher has taught. Not a word is wasted by my teacher, and I do my best to not waste any words when I share with you. So we place our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position, which is much like a prayer. The difference is we drop the left hand in front of our heart center. This allows heaven's connectivity directly to our heart center. Okay, close your eyes. <clears throat> now we'll invite in all of our uh, divine guests. Dear all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, all beings of light serving the plan of the light side, including our beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, including beloved Buddha and Kuan Yin, including our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. We invite in all angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascended masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, and saints. We invite in the heavens animals. We invite in all beings of light, including the light side, planets, stars, galaxies, and universes. We ask most humbly that you join us here at Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center. And we ask the blessings here at Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center to, to come, to offer whatever blessings are most appropriate to uh, bless me in my communication, that the words and everything that I share today reaches the greatest number of souls and provides them the greatest just wisdom system on the highest level. We ask that any blessing that can assist those that are suffering today, that are watching this video, to assist them and their loved ones. And we ask for their dog as appropriate to offer blessing to their loved ones. We're very honored and grateful for this opportunity to connect to you. Dear the soul of the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes. Love you, honor you, respect you, deeply appreciate you. We ask you to please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to join with us at this time as we chant love, peace, and harmony to connect heart to heart, soul to soul. So keep your eyes closed, chant along with me if you are new. Enjoy the blessing. Let us begin. <coughs> Lu la, lu la li. Lu la, lu la la li. Lu la, lu la li, lu la. Lu la, ha, li, lu la. Lu la, ha, li, lu la. O ai wo xin er ling. O ai tran ran li. Wang ling rong her mu shi shong. Shuang ai ping an e xie. Song I ping on her share. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love. Peace and harmony. 
love, peace, and harmony. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony for gathering our hearts and souls together. So welcome, Alicia. Welcome, Don. Welcome, uh, Susan. Welcome, Norma. Aloha, Monica. Welcome, Mike Davis. Welcome, Kristen Strachan and Petra Marie. Aloha. Welcome, Maliana. Uh, welcome, Dvorka. Welcome to your daughter, Dvorka. Welcome, Janet. And Carol, Frederico. So uh, if there are any Divine Healing Hands healers that are watching today, if you would uh, check your guidance and as, as appropriate, offer a blessing for Carol Frederico's pet dog. It's in pain right now. <clears throat> Welcome, Laura Laurie. And anyone else who has just joined at this time. So today's subject is the nature of the spiritual journey. It's ups, it's downs, it's ins, it's outs. The nature of spiritual purification and the nature of the, um, the blessings that are associated with everything that happens in this spiritual journey. Uh, now, as indicated, uh, most of the people, in fact, almost everybody I see that is tuned in today uh, has come to one or more live streams. They are somewhat familiar with the wisdom, the teachings of Master Shah. So, um, but regardless, this video is typically seen uh, potentially by another 100 to 300 people. And um, it's important that they have a little bit of a background. So I will spend the first five or 10 minutes offering a little bit of background on myself, not to bore you, but so, mostly for the newer people so that they have an understanding that when I share this wisdom on the spiritual journey, um, they'll understand the root of some of that wisdom and why it could have value to them. Okay. And um, thank you, Carol. I see you listing that you are an animal healer, so maybe you can connect with Carol Federico. So, um, briefly, I have been on a spiritual journey since literally the age of 18. I remember the light bulb coming on. I had moved into a house uh, with five other people. I was renting a small room in the house. And the lady in the room had some books on her cabinet that were from the Theosophical Society, which was a society back in the 1920s. And the information was channeled information. And it was very written, very 1920-ish, these and those and those and very uh, highfalutin language, so to speak. But it was also exceedingly advanced uh, information and wisdom. They spoke about the universe going into rounds. Rounds means the evolution of the universe as it goes through cycles of, of massive cycles of time, like 26,400 years. And that's one round and so forth. So it went into this very, very... Uh, elongated information. Uh, talked about uh, white magic and, and all many, many different things. It talked about the, the chakras in its own language. It talked about the human vehicle and it talked about our nature and our relationship to everything else. And this was in numerous books. And so this is what kick-started my awareness that we are so much more than this physical body. You have your own story as to how your awareness has been kick-started. Know very clearly that it was your soul and that made you aware, that shows how you awaken. Now, it may have tried to awaken you 10 years ago, but you didn't listen. It may have tried and you started and started down the right path for six months or one year, and then you fell off that horse and you went down a, uh, a side road, so to speak, and now you're starting to step back onto that path. We all have our own um, process, if you will. And we want to make sure we honor ourself in that process. Do not spend any time whatsoever uh, putting yourself down for falling off the horse or not moving fast enough or whatever it is. That stops your soul journey. That inhibits your soul journey. Just look at it, acknowledge it, say, okay, well, I learned a lesson. I will not make those same mistakes again as much as possible and move forward. Give it only that much time. So... Uh, on my journey, I then went to a four-year theosophical school. I didn't even know what theosophical was. I just happened to come across this teacher um, through a friend of a friend 
<coughs> and I liked what he had to say. He happened to be following a teacher who also studied from this Theosophical Society books and had created some of his own. But they all spoke the same wisdoms of love and peace and harmony and alignment. And so I was able to move forward in that four-year school. I learned a lot about um, psychic communication. I learned a lot about uh, many, many different religions and the seeds of love that roll through all of them. Uh, I learned how to be non-judgmental in very many ways. And, uh, and that was the majority of what I had learned. Then I went on and experimented with many different things, much like most of you probably have, including tarot and numerology and uh, you name it. I've probably seen it and you've probably seen it or and will be experiencing it at some point in your soul journey. <clears throat> now some of us, we stop in those places and we give a lot of merit and credit. For example, I really enjoy uh, astrology and a good astrologer. The fact that they can look at a map of when we were born and discern what happened in the past and what could happen in the future is pretty amazing to me. And yet it doesn't necessarily... Uh, assist me with moving my very specific soul journey forward. It's neat, just like talking to a psychic is neat, um, but it needs to have, for me anyway, for me to move forward on my soul journey, I need a lot more depth. And so I kept looking and uh, started training in a program. This was about, um, uh, uh, when I was about 34 years old. Right now I'm a little over 50. And uh, so I had just started awakening. I knew a little bit about spiritual stuff, but not really was on a significant focused path. And I had an experience in which I had a dizzy spells. And I never had dizzy spells. I had no clue what it was. And so my intuition told me that it was actually an imbalance because I had been doing uh, a spiritual practice incorrectly, something I'd read in a book, I said focus like this, spin this thing in your head, and so I did, and I was very dizzy. And so I uh, came to the conclusion that one of my chakras, which truly had no clue what a chakra was, was out of balance at that time. And so I didn't know what to do about it. I lived in a spiritual community known as Sedona, Arizona. And in Sedona, Arizona, there are some very talented people that can assist you, and there are some people that are truly no, no more together than I was at that time, and yet they thought they were. Uh, they thought they could assist me. So I had to be very clear about who I could go to. So uh, fortunately, I trusted my intuition, and it said to ask this new person at work. I asked them, they said, go to this little Korean lady. So I went to this little Korean lady in the Don Yoga Society, and she hurt me. She laid me down on a table and pushed her little small thumbs into my body as if they were hammers, and proceeded to hurt me a lot. But during that uh, acupressure session, um, I felt movement of real life energy in my body. I had never in my 34 years prior to that felt real energy in the human body. But after that session, I felt energy. Not from the pain, but afterwards, there was things moving that had never moved in the entirety of this physical life. And the light bulbs started really coming on at that point. Um, my dizziness had, had released about 50%. I came back for a second and a third session, and she hurt me a lot more in the second and the third session. Uh, but by the end of the third session, it was, uh, it was a very enlightening experience, to say the least. At the end of the third session, at the end of each session, actually, she completed each session by, by uh, doing kneading. You know, bread kneading, where you, where you push your palms? She kneaded my abdominal area a lot, very painfully. Uh, she didn't care that I was screaming. And, um, but at the end, when she stopped two or three minutes later, uh, I felt literally a billion shampoo bubbles, not shampoo, but uh, champagne bubbles. Imagine a billion little champagne bubbles through your whole body. I was literally on cloud nine. I was yelling stop, but by the time she stopped, I was yelling don't stop because it felt that good. And it didn't go away for about 10 minutes. Imagine champagne bubbles in every cell of your body for 10 minutes. It was that extraordinary. Three times. So this enlightened me to, hey, there is really a connection to energy out there, and I have not been feeling it. 
So I went through a three-year process and became a master in the Don Yoga system. And in the system, we held physical body postures, which allowed me to further open up what I've come to discover are chakras and energy systems. Understanding energy meridians. I, I learned to do the acupressure techniques that she hurt me with. I got to hurt other people. Um, it, was, it was pleasurable in that I got to see their results. It was not pleasurable in that I got to give them pain to see those results. But either way, uh, I learned a lot. I reached a point where this system no longer offered me the value that I needed to move forward. And I started training underneath a second master who I had, uh, I was looking around and I discovered her Qigong. For those of you that have watched my live stream, you see behind me an image of a couple of Buddhas. I really had zero clue uh, about Buddhas other than what I'd read and a little bit through the Theosophical School. Certainly didn't have any statues of them or pictures of them in my house. Didn't dishonor them, but didn't honor them. Um, knew very little for the most part. And then <clears throat> uh, I had met this Qigong master. And she, uh, she worked with Medicine Buddha and Kuan Yin. And uh, so I went to a three-day retreat with her. She did this thing called Bigu, B-I-G-U, which translates directly to no, uh, no, no grains. That's the direct translation, Bigu. Basically, we starved for three days. And um, she, uh, she, you know, we had these fungus soup and uh, once a day and um, nine almonds and uh, a few... Um, uh, she she put one cube of sugar in the fungus soup. You know, we, we didn't eat much of anything uh, for those three days. But most of us were were not hungry. Um, she had us get on the scale. And the scale, when I got on the first day, I was, I think, 144. And uh, the next day I got on the scale and I was 136. Now, how does somebody lose eight pounds in one day? It's just not possible, okay? I don't care who you are. It's literally impossible. But I did. Um, I, I, I watched it to make sure nobody was messing with the scale. Uh, and nobody was messing with the scale because everybody else had these wild weight swings three days in a row, and the scale was not being messed with. And so she later s explained that we have a great deal of spiritual weight and, um, and that it, uh, in this process of this three days, she was literally releasing lots of the spiritual weight. Now, by the end... I didn't eat anything, and I was about one pound below normal by the end, by three days. But I went through this entire swing. I would go in the middle of the retreat and walk over to the scale, and I will have lost two pounds. And then three, days, three hours later, I will go check it again, and I will have gained three pounds. I'm telling you, my weight went all over the place. My brain couldn't comprehend this. During this three-day um, retreat, she was doing... Uh, uh, training and teaching, and we were in what's called an energetic field. She literally, as a master, had created an energy field around this group. And that's why we weren't hungry during this time, because we were receiving heaven's uh, frequencies and heaven's energies. Now, I had really no clue what was going on, <clears throat> but this is what I was learning. And at one point, she did what's called the crown chakra. Um, she called it 10,000 water crown chakra awakening. Said, okay, whatever, no clue, I'll, I'll do it. So we all sat up. She came into the room. She uh, turned on this very loud, obnoxious music and hit her little ding. And, you know, I got my eyes closed. I'm like, all right, whatever. And I started feeling, uh, now nobody's around me, mind you. We're just like six or seven of us sitting side by side. I started feeling fire on the top of my head, like somebody had put an acupuncture needle on a stove a thousand of them, and then planted it on top of my head. That's exactly what it felt like. I was about ready to come out of my chair. I had never experienced anything like that. And it went on for minutes. I was like, I was, I was literally ready to yell and say, stop. Uh, but at the same time, I was kind of in shock because how can you explain nobody's touching you, your head is literally on fire with needles? How do you explain that? You, you, you can't. The, the conscious mind can't explain it. Impossible. But it happened. That's all I can tell you. And this was an awakening of, of the channel in my body, and especially through the crown. And so um, during this same three-day retreat with this master, 
we did what was called a, a soul travel. Everyone's heard of soul travel. I've heard of soul travel. Everyone's heard of soul travel. No really clue what it is, but I've heard of it. You know, oh, it's traveling in your dreams. We all have our own version of what we think it is. Well, I experienced it. I had not necessarily traveled except in my dreams. I certainly hadn't traveled, uh, you know, in the daytime when I'm awake, but that's exactly what happened. We're sitting there. She turns on a different kind of music. It was a little less obnoxious. Um, and, but it's quite loud, and uh, did her little ding thing again. And uh, I don't know how long I was gone. We, apparently we were, we were, quote, traveling about 10 or 15 minutes. But it felt like about a minute or two, I was some, not there. I, was, I saw myself very clearly waking up on a pond um, in the middle of what I would call the mountains of China, but I really don't know. Uh, I would say that because the people that were walking around had Asian look. Um, and it was like a boxed canyon kind of a place. So I woke up on a pond, I got up, I started walking around, and I walked over to a round circular area. And in, inside the middle of the circular area, because it was like stepping stones, three stones up, and it was a big circular stepping stones, and then like, uh, like a podium in the middle, a round podium in the middle, and on that podium was this master. And so I bowed down to her, and I had never bowed down ever in my life to anybody, but in this, I did, which was curious. And so then uh, I walked away, started walking around, and there were people walking around in like monk kind of clothes, and they were saying, welcome, hello, um, uh, you know, welcome, things like that, but their mouth didn't open. I was hearing it, and I looked at them, and their eyes were a happy smile, their mouth was, you know, a closed smile, but they were speaking to me. Uh, and so I continued to, to walk around, and uh, I noticed that all of the mountains were golden. Uh, you know, this, they emanated gold, and that there were layers, like, like, a, like a walkway, like, you know, a three-layer hotel, except they, this was just carved into the side of the mountain. And there were entrances. Uh, I think there were doors on the entrances to some of the places along the side of this mountain. Very, very unique experience. Um, and so then, anyway, I got up from where I was sitting, walked back to the same podium area, and there was uh, this, what I come to know as Kuan Yin, and this, this Buddha. And she had eight arms on each side. Now, I'd seen pictures of that. I'd even seen a few statues. But clearly, I had never seen this in any of my dreams. Uh, and her arms were, were, you know, fanned out. And she reached forward with one of them, and in her, uh, in her palm, right here, she had um, a little purple sphere, bigger than a marble, uh, smaller than a quarter, probably about the size of a nickel. And it was iridescent, you know, it kind of had this little, like, universal glow inside of it. And so I went, and I took it out of her palm, because that's, that's what her intention was, she was handing it to me. And um, I bowed down to her, and I went back, and I sat back down where I started. And then I hear this master in the room saying, okay, return. And so I opened my eyes and I looked around and I'm like, is anybody else seeing this? Anybody else hearing this? Am I crazy? What just happened? We got to write down our experience. The tapestry on the wall behind me is a result of that experience with this second master. I trained with her and I trained under her Qigong structure, which helps you to clear the blockages in the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies, which I was learning at that time more about, but still didn't have a very clear understanding, because this particular Chinese master, as connected to heaven as she was, as exceedingly powerful as she was, um, did not have much of an English language. She probably could speak about 100 to 200 words or basic sentence structures. And I was not able to learn the what I craved to learn. And so I got to an end of, of an experience with her. And that, around the same time, I came across Dr. Master Shah's wisdom and teachings. When I started uh, reading his books and watching him in retreats and seeing how, what he was teaching and how he was teaching, he was literally touching on everything that I'd ever learned my previous 30 
you know, 38 years at this point. Um, and I had learned a lot. I wasn't a, a dummy in the world of spirituality, but I didn't have a clear path to move forward. Just having a lot is like having 5,000 quilt pieces and no thread to put it together so you can make a blanket. Doesn't matter that you have a whole lot of intelligence of spirituality unless you have a very clear path from how to get from here to the end result, which is full enlightenment. So what I truly appreciate about Master Shah is that he gave me the needle, he gave me the thread, and he said, this is how you sew it together, this is how you make the blanket, and this is how you get to enlightenment. And he said it in very clear English. He says it in all his books, and he says it in all his retreats, and he says it through uh, people like me, that he's taught to repeat this information. And so I, I personally bow my head to this master, because he didn't have to do that. Nobody has to take time out of their day, leave their family in Canada and run around the world and teach people about love, peace, and harmony, teach people about how to reach enlightenment. Nobody's required to do that. It's a task of service. It's a choice to be selfless. And that's why I bow my head to this master because he gave up a life that we would call life to serve others. And so this leads me to the point where I can now serve you. And so the spiritual journey is, uh, I can go on this subject for hours and hours and hours and still not touch on the same thing I mentioned earlier. So I, now I'm going to tune in. I'm going to use one of the things that I've learned because of Dr. and Master Shah. Um, he teaches us how to clear the blockages in our spiritual body. We have uh, an emotional body, a mental body, a spiritual body, and all of them impact our physical body. They impact our relationships, they impact everything. And so if we can clear up the debris, then we have less problems in the physical body, less emotional problems, less mental problems, and less uh, problems in aligning to heaven. So there is a pathway to accomplish that. And thank God for this, this master uh, uh, going through all the struggles he did. Because you just don't become an enlightened master. You go through a bucket load of struggles to get to where a person like he is. You go through a bucket load of struggles to get to where I can even share this with you. It's not an easy path by any stretch of the imagination. But it is, in every stretch of the word, well worth it. So <clears throat> um, I'm going to do what's called a divine flow. And what that is, is connecting and offering you wisdom from, uh, not from me. And so the ability to offer this information is because of being able to open my spiritual channels. This is something that you can take these classes at Master Shah's centers, like the one I'm at now. You can uh, learn more about it in any of his books. Um, and you can come to, for example, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I offer free uh, um, on the telephone uh, uh, training to to bless and enhance your um, energy centers and your foundational chakras and whatnot. We actually do practices for those, and it's complimentary. Just join by phone. Um, just go to my webpage. You'll see the advertisement. And I'll keep putting it out there, um, and I'll mention it. Uh, maybe Kristen will be able to post it also on this chat. But in either case, I'm going to connect, um, and I'm going to ask for them to share with you. Them being heaven. Um, their perspective on the nature of the spiritual journey as best it can be related to you because everyone definitely is on their own path. And notice that the words they choose will probably resonate very well with you even though each one of you are exceedingly different from each other. <coughs> so give me a moment please. <coughs> Paul, I am one speaking on behalf of your Creator. The spiritual journey is long, it is arduous, it is filled with the greatest of joys and the deepest of sorrows. It is Rarely, beyond rare, limited to one life experience. In fact, there would be no such thing as the path or enlightenment. 
if it was not for the journey from here to there. Most who enter this experience in the physical plane are not able to retain all that they had known before. Their souls carry with them the entirety of all of its experiences. And those experiences are not limited to what happens here. Your soul is beyond wise. Part and parcel of the spiritual journey is to reconnect, to hear clearly your soul. Part and parcel of the spiritual journey is for your soul to reconnect to its creator. The creator is all things, all 7.2 billion humans, all life in every possible form, animate and inanimate, is from the Creator. And each of those parts are on a soul journey. Each of you has come here today because you have been awakened to various degrees. And to the degree you have been awakened, there is a possibility of returning fully and completely to the heart of your Creator. How does one accomplish this in one lifetime? The task, if you will, would require a complete separation from everything you call life. It would require a complete separation from everything that has made you, you. It would require a complete separation from all that you know and all that you think. How then does one get to this place? It is very much a process of remembering and unwinding. It includes the releasing of all that had been done to create disalignment and a creation of all that is necessary to create realignment. You have heard the word karma many times in this master's teaching. It is simply a word that reflects the choices made that separated you from your creator. It is easy to define them. It is anything that brought harm or suffering to others or yourself. The numbers can be quite extraordinary when you think of all of those and yourself that you may have brought discord to. The next step is to realign <coughs> your beingness to your creator. This is done in a direct correlation with the releasing of all those things that have kept you separate. Love and forgiveness, you have been taught, is the keys. And it is the most simplest of teachings. And yet, <clears throat> for much of humanity, the most difficult to apply. The return to Creator is done through awakening to these truths as expressed and awakening of your spiritual body. In the awakening of your spiritual body, there is the highest, most direct release of the blockages that show up on the physical, emotional, and mental levels. There are those that wish to resolve things physically only, and this is perfect for where they are at on their soul journey. There are those that spend an extraordinary amount of time to resolve emotional-based issues. 
And this too is perfect for where they are at. They may be not ready to recognize the originating source being their karma and the uh, solution being at the level of spirituality. There are those that have significant mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, and significant ego attachments and more that have great difficulty releasing the great benefits of the desires that they have become very attached to and so forth. And this again is perfect and okay for them where they are at in their journey. There is, as you have heard, and is true, no judgment, no criticism, no nothing that is considered wrong by your beloved Creator. Think clearly about this. If your Creator created all things, including you, and your Creator judged this part of himself, but said this part of himself is perfect, then your Creator would no longer be the perfection that it is. In other words, any thoughts about yourself or another that is not in alignment with the greatest love, which is your original source, then that thought not only creates karma, but creates separation from truth. And so it is that each one of us is on our journey of remembering this one simple alignment. This is why it is said that love and forgiveness can heal all wounds and melt all blockages. This is why it is said that the path to immortality is through love. The physical journey is, can be aligned by resolving the soul journey. There is in each human being the seven soul houses, also known as chakras. There is in each spiritual body direct, unimpeded connection to your Creator and your beloved Mother Earth. They are the yin and the yang. They are which birthed you. And therefore, they are perennially, perennially connected to you. The energetic vessel that is your spiritual body, that is what resides in you, carries in it, on it, and around it the various blockages that is loosely termed spiritual debt or karma. And when you go about using high-level practices to release the blockages in these energetic aspects, then the vessel which holds the spiritual debt can then release it. The representation of that spiritual debt, be it physical suffering, emotional imbalance, mental uh, imbalances, and more, relationships, finances, etc., can then be brought closer to corrected alignments. In conclusion, if you simply place your focus on the highest wisdom and teachings you can find, not to be diverted by desirous things, by selfish things, continue to process through all that comes up with love and forgiveness, and do the necessary spiritual-based practices, you have the highest propensity of aligning to your soul journey the fastest. You have the highest possibility
of releasing your suffering the fastest. You have the highest potential of aligning to your soul and what it desires to accomplish in this life in the greatest way possible. This wisdom should be sufficient to help you to understand the nature of your being, the nature of your purpose here, and how to move forward in this process. It has been my honor as a spokesperson on behalf of your beloved Creator to share this wisdom with you at this time. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so thank you so much for that wisdom from our uh, beloved Creator, uh, our spokesperson of. Yes, uh, I agree with your comment, Darren. That's my understanding as well. We are a soul having a physical experience. So, on the spiritual journey, we have a lot of opportunities. That is a different word than the word problems. It's all about perspective and doing our best to maintain that perspective when we might be having experiences that are not what we would call enjoyable. <clears throat> we have a tenacity, each of us, to move through and past whatever that suffering is. But it is the suffering that is the opportunity. And it is the recognition of that as the opportunity that can cause it to be released and dissolved as quickly as possible so that we can then level up and level out of wherever is our blockage is. The spiritual journey is about recognizing, as Darren has indicated, we are a soul first, having a physical experience. It is the fact that we have, in coming into this physical plane, got bogged down in the experiences. I have said many times before, it begins with taking responsibility in this awareness. And that responsibility includes in the suffering. We have received a variety of teachings throughout this planet. Some of them do not in agree at all with this wisdom. They say there is one time and one time only. And they say that, you know, whatever happens, happens. Sorry. This uh, wisdom that I'm sharing follows um, a structure that says the soul lives forever, but we have this opportunity to realign ourselves to clear things so that our soul can become higher and purer. My understanding of enlightenment, as has been taught to me, and what resonates with me, I'll share with you, whatever resonates with you is perfect. What I have come to learn from my teacher, who I do believe to be an enlightened being, is that there are three levels of enlightenment. <clears throat> there is soul enlightenment, there is mind enlightenment, and there is body enlightenment. The way he shares with it is soul enlightenment is one of the easiest to reach. Mind enlightenment, exceedingly difficult. Body enlightenment, even harder. And he explains that soul enlightenment is when we go through the process of becoming more and more love, higher and higher layers and levels of love. How do we do that? By releasing all that is not love, by releasing all of our regret towards self, guilt towards self, anger and resentment towards self, all negative self stuff. When we love self fully and completely, we can, of course, love everything outside of us. So truly, enlightenment at the level of soul, before we get to mind and body enlightenment, is loving self. Everything that has been done other than that is, is, is not in alignment. True story, 
Uh, I just put this on my blog and posted it on my page a few days ago. There is a gentleman from Hawaii. <coughs> he, um, he is a psychologist. He agreed to go to work at one of the most difficult um, uh, prisons where the hardest prisoners were at, the ones that nobody could work with. They were the, the meanest, most unpleasant people in the state. And he went, agreed to work there, but not to talk to them. He just wanted to sit in his office and read their files. That was his agreement. They allowed him to go do this. And at the end of his tenure there, which is approximately a few years, the, all of the prisoners left in good shape, dramatically better, like off the charts. Nobody knows what happened better. And they had to close the prison. So he didn't talk to them, not once. So the question becomes, how did he accomplish from here to here? And uh, a, a well-known speaker, I can't think of his name, called him and interviewed him. And he included a lot of his information in the book. And I read the excerpts of it just a few days ago, so I posted it. And this is the, the nut, nutshell overview. He said what he did was he opened the file of one of the prisoners. And he would read through every single thing that they ever had a record on that this person had ever done bad. And when he found one thing only, and it could have been that, um, it wasn't bad, excuse me, it was everything that ever happened, you know, from his childhood, his father abused him, whatever it was, okay? And he would stop, and this is what he did. He said, dear all souls, including this one, if I have ever harmed you in this way, Ever, please forgive me. I love you. Please forgive me. I love you. And he did that over and over and over and over and over. Nothing else. And he did that for each one of these prisoners. And one by one, their entire personality shifted. People were willing to come back and work there. Matter of fact, the, they had the best a record of, of employees staying, not taking sick leave, things like that. Thank you, Kristen. Joe Vitali is the one that, that had researched this book. Um, so this is a true story. What's the message here? What is the enlightenment that can be gained here? The hardest criminals on the planet were reversed through love and forgiveness by someone that did not communicate with him. And he asked forgiveness for himself for having caused this to these souls. Please forgive me for causing this to you. That was, his, that was what he did. Now that is beyond extraordinary. What is the message deeper inside this? We are very interconnected. Enlightenment, the ability to get from here to where we want to be, the ability to solve all of our sufferings. You think you got suffering? What about those guys in prison? What caused them in their life to make such heinous choices, such, such unpleasant choices that harmed so many other people that put them in that place? Because you know they must have had a very miserable life prior to that. What was their life like compared to your suffering? Probably a little bit more. And yet, they went through a dramatic healing from somebody outside of them doing this. We are beyond measure interconnected. We are one. And when we recognize that the spiritual journey is the return to oneness, when we move every thought, word, and action to love, to forgiveness, when we check ourselves and love and forgive ourselves each and every time we say something unpleasant to or about ourselves each and every time we do something to that coworker, to that child to that parent to that uh, lover to that ex-lover that harmed you this is something that can be taught to our skill school children this is something that can be taught to your children we can change a generation in one generation we can literally turn the world inside out in one generation if we just teach them this most simple foundational teaching. The big way is extremely simple. This is a base teaching of the Tao. The big way is very, very simple. So you can hear and read 10,000 books on enlightenment. Soul enlightenment is enlightening your soul to be love. And you can do that in each moment. Mind enlightenment. What is mind enlightenment? 
<clears throat> this is the next level in the soul journey. Mind enlightenment is removing negative mindsets, negative attitudes, negative beliefs, ego, and attachments. Attachments like, I'd rather be someplace else right now. Attachments like, I gotta have that chocolate ice cream. Attachments like, oh, no, 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 I can't be doing that now. I've got to watch my, you know, CSI, da, 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 da. These are attachments. Mindsets. Mindsets are, um, this is the only way, and I, I know it. I'm very clear on it. This is what I was taught. It is the way it is. That's a mindset. That's like me telling you this is the only way. What I'm teaching you now is the only way. There is no other way. Christianity, don't believe it, you know. That would be very egotistic of me to say that, and it would be very wrong. That path could be an exceptional and perfect path for that person is on their soul journey. Everybody is exactly where they're supposed to be on their journey. So don't allow anybody to put you down where you're at on yours, but never judge where they are at on theirs. And if they feel very expressive about what they think about you're at on your journey, you say, I love you. I thank you that you care about me so much that you wish to be this expressive and defensive. But I wish you to honor where I'm at on my soul journey, and I recognize that this is perfect for you. This is staying in love. This is staying in forgiveness. This is staying in alignment. This is not creating karma. And this is recognizing that everybody is where they need to be on their soul journey. It's not even tolerance. It's just love. This is releasing of mindsets, and they show up in all different areas. There is negative thoughts. How many of you have negative thoughts? Raise your hand. Okay? Every hand should be flying up. I have them every day, <laughs> probably a whole lot more than I catch myself with. But the more I pay attention, the more I ask for forgiveness for that negative thought, the more I look at where did that negative thought come from? A lot of our negative thoughts are on autopilot. You ever notice that? autopilot. The conscious person that wants to actually move towards enlightenment on their soul journey says, huh, where did that come from? What is the original source of that? They water, walk it back, and then they do love and forgiveness practice around that. That's what stops the cycle of the negative thought. Negative attitudes, okay? Oh, that'll never work. Why do you do that? You know, He's, I can't believe he's doing that. Negative attitudes, okay? We learn these things. It's not something we just pop out of the womb and just start saying these things. No, these are learned things. Mind enlightenment is about consciously seeing these areas. Master Shah says it's easier to move an entire mountain than it is to reach mind enlightenment. That's how difficult these mind blockages can be. Uh, body enlightenment. Body enlightenment is the body becomes a light being. Jesus is a light being. Believe in Jesus? I believe in Jesus. I hope you do. Jesus does come, does offer blessings. Some people see him through their spiritual eye. Some people see him with their physical eye if he wishes to uh, shift his, his um, energetic makeup into a physical body. Enlightened beings absolutely have this ability, beings who have reached the highest levels of enlightenment. And so we can all go there. This, this benevolent master Jesus has said that you can do everything I have done and more. How do we accomplish this? We have to follow a pathway that can take us to those next levels. If you're at a place that is doing that, keep doing more of it. But you noticed I mentioned I went to this uh, master training, Don Yoga, it opened up my body. I reached a point where I couldn't do more. I went to a second master. She helped me uh, tremendously, but I reached a point where I couldn't do more. I kept searching. It may be that I will find uh, uh, another uh, being who can take me even higher than this master. So far, it hasn't happened. This one keeps going higher and keeps giving more and more information, keeps giving more books and more practices. And I keep getting better and better at clearing my blockages that I'm sharing with you examples of right now. And so these are duplicatable processes. 
Do you think that our beloved creator brought beings like a Master Shah, like a Jesus, like a Buddha, like a Krishna, like a, the Dalai Lama? Do you think that, that our creator brought those benevolent beings, these wise beings to earth accidentally? He brought them so that we could follow a path wherever we're at on our path. Because everyone's on a different level. And there are different masters that come for different levels. Um, all of you align to the way I teach because we're on a similar path. So this may serve you, but it may not, and that's perfectly okay. As you move forward on your spiritual journey, you will get tested. Be very clear that this will happen. It is called spiritual testing. There is a name for it, and there is a way to work through it. Spiritual testing is heaven saying, I love you more than you possibly know. And we so much are all around you. We are under your feet. We are around you. We are in you. We are your heart. We are everywhere to support you in your return process. And we love you so much, we will give you many, many, M-I-N-I, many opportunities to awaken a little bit more. And this awakening can sometimes be painful. Why is it painful? Because we are looking at it through the colored glasses of our negative mindsets, negative attitudes, negative beliefs, ego, and attachment. Our mind is discerning the event or experience through its colored glasses, and we see it as painful. Do you get that? This is called spiritual pain or, or spiritual growth, depending on how you respond or react to it. Okay? So the reason I enjoy working with Master Shah, teaching his wisdom, is because he tells you how to go through it. He tells you what it is, and he tells you how to go through it. It is so very important and powerful to give merit, credit, and value to the great spiritual beings, all of them that have come to humanity. I cannot tell you how painful it is when people say negative things about my teacher. They are coming from their mind. They are coming from their negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. They're coming from a place that is very restricted. All I can do is send them love and blessings to their soul in hopes that they awaken enough to recognize that when they say something unpleasant about a being that brings wisdom of this nature, they're not helping their soul journey. So I ask for forgiveness on their behalf so that they don't incur karma because they know not that they say, when they say unpleasant things about a benevolent being, it's not good. So we must have a heart of love for everyone, regardless if it resonates with us or not. Spiritual testing can come in so many forms. It can come at the level of physicality. It can come at the emotional level. It can come at the, uh, a mental level. It can come in relationships. It can come in finances. It comes because we are on the path. It comes because we cannot move higher until we move through what is in front of us. Uh, Eckhart Tolle speaks constantly about being in the present moment. Being in the present moment is simply about seeing what is as it is. The beauty of Master Shah's wisdom and teachings is that he assists us to see what it is as it is with love and forgiveness. He gives us the power and the tools to transform those blockages wherever they're coming from because it's truly irrelevant where they come from with this wisdom. We can see that, oh, this might be a karmic incident that's come to me. It might be a mindset that needs to be transformed. It might be an ego aspect that needs to be transformed. It doesn't matter. If we can be present to it, we can then stop and see, aha, this is a spiritual testing. Okay? If it is not bringing you joy and happiness, it's a spiritual test. It is very simple. How do you know you're in a spiritual test? Are you happy? Is it bringing you joy? Okay, then be present to it. Ah, I love you. I see that heaven loves me so much. They have brought to me 
this opportunity to transform this mindset, attitude, or belief, to transform this anger response, yesterday's teaching. They gave me the opportunity to move more into love and forgiveness. Uh, this blessing has given me the opportunity to recognize that my finances are suffering because I could have brought great suffering to others. Or I need to transform my mindsets around finances. Everything is an opportunity. It requires presence, and then we can see it clearly. Once we see it clearly, we just apply the tools that we have been so blessed to receive. We have been given tools of higher frequencies to transform these things faster. How many of you uh, do something good and valuable, transformative, and then the next day you make another mistake? It happens to all of us. It happens numerous times. Why? Because we're human. We're, we're, we're a soul having a physical experience and we're working through the blockages to become a higher enlightened being. But we're working with things at the level down here with our mind and whatever we have learned so far. This makes it so much more difficult. This is why a, a, a being like a Master Shah is so important to humanity because he has dedicated his life to serve humanity. And because of this dedication, because of the proving of this dedication, literally, if you actually did your homework and you knew what he did to get to where he's at, you would be very clear of the dedication he has to serve human beings. And accordingly, he has been gifted the opportunity to transmit power into objects and things, into people. He has given, been given the power to, to individuals to transmit extraordinary healing abilities and blessings. And he has made it freely available in many, many cases. Pick up a book. It will help you transform your blockages a lot faster than you on your own. Shaw's Golden Healing Ball, Divine Love, Peace, Harmony, Rainbow, Light Ball. They are literally objects in heaven, and you call them. Dear Shaw's Golden Healing Ball, can you please come to help me transform this financial blockage? Can you please come to help me transform my relationship blockage with you know, my wife? These are uh, uh, objects, things, or spiritual uh, connectivities that carry a substantially higher frequency, a much higher Shen, Qi, and Jing to help us transform our soul, our physical world junk that we wallow in. So we want to surround ourselves with as much of this as possible. Why do you think I chant love, peace, and harmony at the beginning of every uh, uh, live stream? Because it aligns our souls, hearts, minds, and bodies. It helps us release the day of whatever the crud it is we brought into this, and it blesses us to, um, to keep ourselves in that frequency. What did I just say? How many times do we do something good next day, fall off the horse again? We need to surround ourselves with the highest possible love, light, and frequencies. The source soul song of love, peace, and harmony does that. If you're not playing it in your work, your house, and your car, and everywhere else at all times, you're missing the boat. If you're playing it and you're still going through the crud, well, give yourself a break. Recognize that part of the reason I'm still going through the crud is because I'm bringing up a little bit more to process these higher frequencies are literally washing away the dirt in each moment as we're going forward. And I can do more love and more forgiveness. I can say, dear God, thank you for all the spiritual testing. I'm greatly honored. Can I get like, you know, a, a one week break? It's a little heavy right now. Let me come up for air. Okay. You can do that. Heaven's very generous. Um, and, and then you just enjoy yourself a while. And then you might get a little hit over the head again for another spiritual teaching. Recognize it as an opportunity. Change your brain. Ah, another thing that I've called unpleasant the last 20 years. Okay, this time, I'm moving forward. I see you as an opportunity. Let me apply the tools that I've learned. Dear Shah's Golden Healing Ball, can you please come from heaven? Dear the soul of Jesus, could you please come and offer blessings? These are all, all beings of light that want to serve you. Why not ask them to come? If you received a healing transmission or you've read Master Shah's books, all the downloads and treasures I've received from Master Shah's books, please turn on. Could you all please bless this area of blockage, this opportunity that has come to me, and assist 
us to transform this as much as possible on a permanent basis. Bless me to uh, shift my thinking about this, to see the best parts of this, to do forgiveness around it, and to move forward. Now, you could release 20% of the associations there to, to chanting for 10 minutes. It could come back a few days later, whatever it is. Do it again. You release another 20%. This is the nature of the spiritual journey. It is about clearing the blockages in the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual body. Do the higher level practices. Um, receive the, the special services for clearing your blockages in your, your energy centers, the seven chakras and the, and the heart center and the lower dantian and the kundalini. If you can't afford to honor for those services, do the practices by yourself, download the treasures and do as much as you can by yourself. Um, but do the higher level practices to clear your energy bodies. Uh, join me Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't know if Kristen has posted that or not. Um, but I will at the end if I don't see it show up there. And it's at 1 o'clock. It's an hour before this. <clears throat> On Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, it's a telephone call. And I will be doing practices complementary to boost your foundational energy centers and your chakras. What happens when we do these? It naturally clears the mindsets, attitudes, beliefs. It naturally clears the emotional blockages. It naturally clears the physical pains and sufferings. This is why in the flow, the, the, the being that came through that offered that wisdom was saying, um, uh, you can be aware of these physical blockages, emotional blockages, mental blockages, and you can work with them at those levels. But it's a little hard, guys. Do the higher work. Work at it at the level of the energy body that you were given by your creator. Because it is, it is the vessel through which these blockages are held. You deal with things at the level of soul, Master Shah's base teachings. Heal the soul first, and the mind and body will follow. And so when you uh, deal with it at that level, you will find these other areas transforming easier, better, faster, and the rest of your life will start slowly but surely getting smoother. If you'd like to be on the fast track to clear these things up, contact me. Uh, special services are available to clear the spiritual debts that get stuck in these zones, in these special body parts and areas. Uh, it works for pain and suffering too, but those are there is an extra honor fee for those. But I can tell you from personal experience, I personally spent well over $10,000 easily to have these cleared by, by my teachers, uh, and it has accelerated my path. That's why I'm able to communicate with you this hopefully clearly. And so these are available for you too if that's of interest. So I'm wrapping this up now. I want to offer my deepest gratitude to all of you for joining me today. I want to offer you uh, my deepest gratitude for sharing. If you haven't already, please hit the share button. Let other people know about this. You never know. Somebody's life could be saved um, because of this teaching. And please um, uh, feel free to contact me, asoulhealer at yahoo.com or through Facebook Messenger or through my website listed above this video. I love you all. I wish to offer my deepest gratitude to heaven, divine Tao source, to all beings of light who come, to beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, to beloved Buddha and Kuan Yin, to all of your heaven's teams. We honor them. I thank the soul of this uh, Master Shah's Tao Healing Center and all the beings present here. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody.